We are here in the fighting capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. A gorgeous April evening. We have a stellar night of action on tap here in Las Vegas. Let's take a look at our main event of the evening. A, the WBA and the IBF Junior Middleweight titles are on the line. The American Dream at Islandi Lara takes on the unbeaten champion, Swift Jared Hearn. The co-main event is a rematch dating back of December of last year. The new champion, Caleb Truex, who dethroned James DeGale. Both men get it on in the rematch here tonight. Also, we will start off our live coverage with an IBF junior middleweight eliminator. Julian J-Rock Williams, the former world title challenger, looks to challenge for a world title again, but standing in his way is the surging Nathaniel Gallimore. As we are inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas at the Join, a wonderful venue for boxing home to a triple header. Now, earlier tonight, we saw a thrilling affair featuring the former world champion Sergio Morum and Alfredo Pedro Angulo. The action was intense, and here's how I called the fight here in Las Vegas. This is the final round. Sergio Moore, the former world champion, battling Alfredo Angulo. So far, it has been Mora who has been the more technically sound fighter. Right hands and left hooks for Mora that have been finding their mark on Angulo. Angulo seems to be just a step slow on Mora. Mora very sharp, doubling up on his jab. Using his ring generalship, setting traps. And also, the case of Mora going from conventional southbound duty many times, he must have switched his stance probably 25 times at least in this fight. Nice hooks to the body by Mora. But Angulo, he should realize that this is a very important round in his career. Both guys are family men, but Angulo has to realize he is under two minutes away at least, unless I've seen something vastly different than the judges of suffering a second straight defeat. Straight left that connected for Sergio Moore. Look at Moore go to work. What a fighting like the fighter that is behind, chopping right hand downward for Angulo. Perrito. 
And you see Sergio Mora. And I have to tell you, Mora looked very good here in this matchup. He was doing a wonderful job of setting traps. He was aggressive. As there you see both fighters embrace both Mora and Angulo. That's a sign of two guys who have all the respect in the world for one another. They embrace, and you know what? That is just quality sportsmanship between the two. They both tested each other here tonight. And it's likely that Mora will be in line for the victory. And let's take a look at some of the action from this fight. And as you see Mora, who was doing a very good job with that right hand. As you're seeing Angulo pressure, Mora here, and that was that right hand on the shoulder, and Mora saying, hey, look, he caught me on the shoulder, not on the chin. Angulo was pressuring, but then it was that right hand that started to take over for Sergio Mora. Stepping inside, driving back on Gula with the right hand, and also the left hook of Sergio Mora, but also the aggression of Pedro Angulo as well. Angulo certainly came to fight and gave a very good account of himself, but Sergio Mora was the sharper of the two, jabbing in that big right hand that continued to really give issues to Pedro Angulo. And Angulo would have success sometimes when he would push Mora against the ropes. And there you saw that right hand that got through. But at times, Mora was just willing to sit back, set traps so that he can land left hooks. And this was the tail end of the fight between Mora and Angulo. They both were letting the leather fly here in this matchup. And you saw the will from both guys. They were emptying out their tanks here in this fight. And a nice left hook by Mora. And Angulo continued to pressure Mora. And Mora with that left hook that connected on the jaw of Angulo. And more work by Angulo. And that left hook we saw start to find its mark in the second half of the fight for Sergio Mora. Angulo looked was crowding Mora, but look at Sergio Mora. That was that left hook followed by that right uppercut. That was the best combination of the fight that we saw. And both guys really putting everything out there. And just awaiting the decision between the two combatants. They love, and now let's send it up to our ring announcer for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, before I read the scorecards, a round of applause for both fighters, please. After eight rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Adelaide Bird scores the contest 77 to 75 for Angulo. Judge Tim Cheatham scores the contest 78 to 74 for Mora. And Judge Ricardo Ocasio scores it 78 to 74 for your winner by split decision. From Los Angeles, California, the Latin snake, Sergio. And Sergio Mora gets the unanimous decision victory over the split decision victory, I stand corrected. Over and Sergio Mora goes over and he chastises and Adelaide Bird. Applause for his opponent, please, Alfredo. Alfredo. Mora has every right to be upset. A split decision, but I am blown away by how Adelaide Bird can call that in favor of Angulo. I mean, how many times does she need to make a mistake? Mora was winning comfortably. You saw him. Both judges had it 78 to 74 as we take a look at. So we had Tim Cheatham, Ocasio, 80, 78, 74, the right man won. And we give credit to Mora, who got the victory by split decision here in Las Vegas. Please, please.
We are here in Las Vegas at the Joint at the Hard Rock Hotel here in Las Vegas. The IBF Junior Middleweight Eliminator matchup. The winner will be the number one contender to Jared Hurd's IBF title as it stands now. Julian J. Rock Williams taking on Nathaniel Gallimore. Williams having won two straight Gallimore seven fight win streak here tonight. There you see Gallimore adorned in the colors of Jamaica. Originally from Jamaica, moved to Chicago when he was 12 years old. Julian Williams from Philadelphia. The former world title challenger. Both guys have been going back and forth on one another. Gallimore claims that it is Julian Williams that he is not a rival. He claims that he is Pebbles. He is going to expose him here tonight. Julian Williams says we're better than all these guys. He's going to have to back it up. Sending up to our Hall of Famer, here's the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the joint here at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, as Premier Boxing Champions presents our big night of action, and it's all brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, TGD Promotions, and Showtime, sponsored by Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach and Casa Noble Tequila, the noble pursuit. This bout in the ring is sanctioned by the IBF. The president, Daryl Peoples, supervisor, Randy Newman. Introducing our judges, scoring from ringside. From Reno, Nevada, Eric Cheek. From Villa Park, California, Max DeLuca. And from Las Vegas, Patricia Morse Jarman. And introducing our third man to the ring, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Tony Weeks. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Middleweight World Title Eliminator. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the colors of the Jamaican flag, green, black, and yellow. Fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, by way of Kingston, Jamaica. He weighed in at a ready 153 pounds. His record, 20 wins, one loss and one draw, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the IBF number four world contender, introducing Nathaniel, the great Gallimore. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with black and gold trim, hailing from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He weighed in at the junior middleweight limit of 154 pounds. His record stands at 24 wins. One loss and one draw and one no decision with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked the IBF number five contender, number two by the WBC. Please welcome the former world title challenger, introducing Julian J. Rock Williams. Once again, a referee in charge, Tony Weeks, now to give instructions. All right, here we go. Okay, both trunks are high right here. Right here is good, anything below is going to be low. Right here is good, anything below is going to be low. I want a good, clean fight. 
Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect us of all times. Let's go. Our first fight tonight here in Las Vegas. Julian J. Rock Williams against Nathaniel Gallimore. The winner will be the number one contender to the IBF. Junior middleweight championship currently held by Jared Hurd. Williams, who is on a two-fight win streak, says in regards to the trash talk with a Gallimore, he has done it in a classless way. I have no reaction to him. He's trying to draw himself, attention to himself, and doing it in a way that is not the classiest. Williams claims that Gallimore's gonna have to back it up here tonight. Gallimore, when asked about fighting Julian Williams, he said, this isn't the toughest opponent I've fought. I've been inside the ring against guys like Jason Rosario, who was surging, and also Justin Deloach. Jason was 12-0 with 10 knockouts. He said Julian Williams just got the recognition by getting knocked out from Jamal Charlo. You see on the back of the trunks of Nate Gallimore, it's R.I.P. Ed Brown. That was one of his former stablemates, Ed Brown. Killed in Chicago over a year and a half ago. Gallimore used to train on the west side of Chicago under George Hernandez, but after the fight with Deloach, he parted ways, and now his trainer is John Pullman, who incidentally used to train former heavyweight title contender Gerald Washington. Julian Williams has been with the same trainer since day one. That means even Bretman Edwards. Gallimore late start in regards to boxing. Moved to Chicago when he was 12 from Jamaica, but picked up boxing amateur-wise at 23. His grandfather took him into the boxing gym and he fell in love with it. He won the Chicago Golden Gloves when he was 26 and turned pro shortly thereafter. His grandfather though passed away before Gallimore made his pro debut. For Williams, he's been boxing since he was 12 years of age, had 100 amateur fights, and has been a pro for nearly eight years. And incidentally, Williams just celebrated his 28th birthday two days ago. Delmore and Williams still the feeling out process. Clearly both guys have quite a bit of respect between the two. This one should be, you know, the feeling out process is right now, but give them a little time and they will certainly heat up. The press conference was certainly very heated. The weigh and stare down as well. Williams using his jab. Coming into tonight's matchup. They weighed in. Williams weighed in at 154 pounds. Gallimore 153. Williams stepped on the scale tonight and weighed 170. Gallimore 161. So 16 pounds overnight for Williams. Only eight for Gallimore. Hearing the final moments of round one, this IBF junior middleweight eliminator. Ray Flores joining you here ringside in Las Vegas as we near the end of the first. Julian Williams. Put something on his head. Stay nice and relax. Wait till your heart rate go down and start to go to work. You tried to throw a big right hand that round and that was too big, you hear me? Stay with your jab. His fans are going to get impatient. They're going to be mad at him for, for, for being in a boxing match. And that's when you jab around him and you drop your right hand. Don't throw no long, crazy right hands and nothing crazy. Let your body warm up. Mental right heat. Okay, when he's jabbing you, don't pull straight out. Yeah, keep the hand up. Just trying to shoot that right hand over the top, okay? Nice and relax. Deep breath. All right. You don't got to go crazy. In a few rounds, we'll pick up the pressure, but we need to make sure that he's, he's expending mental energy. Okay? So you listen to the two corners. Steven Edwards telling Julian Williams, look, this is what we want. His fans are going to get mad at him for being involved in a boxing match. For Gallimore, they want... They urged him, John Coleman said they want Williams to extend mental energy, so they want to apply the pressure. When it came to what he learned in the loss to Jamal Charlo, Julian Williams had this to say. He said, I thought I was doing well, so I never pushed the panic button after it didn't go my way. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. The plan was always to improve each fight in each game. And that is what we are doing. Williams actually spent the last few weeks at training camp. Nice left hook called by straight right hand at the snack 
nutrition facility that is led by Victor Conti. Did some conditioning work and also continued to improve on his fitness. And Victor Conti has a plethora of snack nutrition products out there that Williams says he feels very fresh and is really, his body is feeling better at 28 than what he did when he was 22-23. Or using his jab followed by that straight right hand. But Williams is content being in the center of that ring. Here Gallimore, he needs to make this a rough and tumble affair. Make it more of a brawl on the inside. For Williams, he comes from Philadelphia, so he can box, he can punch, he can do multiple things. Not to say Gallimore can't, but Williams has that. Can no doubt go back to that flick, that slick Philly south side style. Williams using his jab and Gallimore still trying to find the opening. For Gallimore, seven straight victories all by stoppage. Last year having defeated Jason and Rosadia here in Las Vegas. Also halted Justin Delosio at that time. Was won six in a row. The right hand came across the top. But Williams is still having his way and Gallimore isn't throwing as much. I'm surprised because Gallimore was quite vocal in the lead up to this fight. Well, this is his game plan to have Williams set a little bit of a rhythm, but so far J-Rock from Philadelphia is getting into his rhythm as Gallimore pounds the body of Williams. And Gallimore almost has like a snicker on his face. Kind of a smile, kind of a scowl in the same way. Stop, so. stop, stop, stop! Let him up. Joe Williams coming off of a win over Ishe Smith, dating back to November of last year here in Las Vegas. And that is the end of the second as Galmore talks to Williams as he goes to the corner. There you see it is Landy Lada, the American dream, having won six in a row. He puts his WBA super middleweight crown on the line against this man, the undefeated Swift Jared Hurd from Echo Keek, Maryland. Hurd having come off a win over Austin No Doubt Trot in October of last year. Made his first successful title defense, now puts his IBF crown on the line against the man who he feels everyone has avoided, that being Edislandi Lada. Lada coming 34 years of age from the Cuban School of Boxing, close to 400 amateur fights. Has been in there with Canelo Alvarez, Pedro Angulo, Paul Williams. And back to live action here, round number three. This one is scheduled for 12. Here at the Hard Rock. Also, what is unique about this matchup is that they're opposing cutmen. You have Mike Rodriguez, who's in the corner of Julian J. Rock Williams, Andrew Rodriguez, Mike Rodriguez's son, who is the top man for Nate Gallimore. So it is a family affair here in Las Vegas in regards to the two combatants with the Rodriguez family, both cutmen for Gallimore and Williams. Shot to the body oh, hands free, hands free. Don't hold him, don't hold him. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Watch you, let him go when I tell you. Separates them. I gave the first two rounds to Julian Williams based on his boxing ability. Gallimore's having some issues when it comes to trying to get on the inside and impose his will upon Williams. Williams with his jab, settling in this, the pace and the tempo, and Williams wants to fight him. Nice left hook to the body by Williams. Don't hold, don't hold him. Don't Some hold shots him. Downstairs. Hand free. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Listen to me. Watch the hole in the inside. He said, watch the hole in the inside. He starts off with the left hook. Followed by an uppercut by the left hook to the body by Williams. Williams looking to break down. Galmore gets the marshal to the right hand. Both guys exchanging right hands close distance. Williams with an uppercut. Williams 
speed on his punches as his Gallimore. If you're Gallimore, this is where you have to do your best work. He should step a little bit. Hands free. Just step behind a little bit to try to get some leverage behind. Stop, 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 stop. That Come on, watch the hold on this. Watch the head. Here we go. Gallimore, and that is experience on the behalf of Williams as Gallimore has the significant reach advantage. Stop, stop. I got you. Hey, where's my jab at, mate? I got you. Come on, hands free, hands free. Stop, stop, stop. What the? Stop. Here we go. Tony Weeks gets in the middle of once again. Left hook. Dominic's mark for Gallimore. This is what he needs to do his best foot. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. Watch the head. Watch the head. Watch that hole. Let him go. And I know that Tony Weeks has warned him, but if you're Williams, this is what you have to do. You cannot allow a longer fighter to get full leverage. Stop, stop, stop. And Let him up. Williams is swarming Gallimore, disrupting his flow. And his rhythm as well. Step on by right hand. You won that round on the inside. Yo, listen up. Get your breathing down. Get the towel on the head. Towel on the head. Okay, you gotta watch that hole and watch that bring that head in. He's just trying to keep it down from the punches, right? And here is some body work from Julian Williams, and look at the exchange of body shots. As you saw, Williams go into the body, followed by Gallimore with that uppercut right to the abdomen that was on the bolt line, on the belt line. And here you see Julian Williams. Is he looking for that opening? Look at the craftiness of Julian Williams. Placing that right hand to the abdomen, followed by a left hook to the solar plexus of Gallimore. And Gallimore not liking that too much. So far, this has played out the way Julian Williams expected it to. Round number four, this one's scheduled for 12. Gallimore had success there in the third, but overall, the body of work would have to give to Julian Williams. Gallimore is looking to pressure Julian Williams, but he's got to extend on the jab. There are different kinds of jabs in boxing, but the jab that is just, that is an authoritative jab, the jab that's just out there to kind of beat you a little bit. The jab that is just non-stop in your face. What Gallimore is hands doing free. is he's kind of holding no, up. No, hold him. Hands free. Stop, stop, jab, stop. But I think he's Come on. Watch the hole. Here we go. He's being countered by Julian Williams. But he's got to extend and commit to the jab if you're Gallimore. Because Gallimore coming in with power punches is not going to throw Julian Williams off Hands free. Hands free. Hands free. Stop, stop, stop. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. I got you, I got you, let him up, let him up. More chance that they are staying in the corner of Gallimore that Williams is holding. There is that chap that Gallimore needs to use. Because he has not been committing to it, whereas Williams has been. Stop, I got you, I got you. This is turning into a fight that is disrupting, that both guys are disrupting their flow. Gallimore needs the space and the distance from the reach standpoint. There's a chop and right at the Howard at Williams. Gallimore is looking solid here in the fourth. He seems to be the busier of the two. Straight right hand that connected by Gallimore. Gallimore picking up on that jab. Now he's finding his range when it comes to the jab. Is the 29-year-old out of Jamaica. Uppercut that missed by Gallimore, but the jab is right in the grill of Julian Williams. And that straight right hand down the middle. And Gallimore has adjusted. Rather than Gallimore having to be the comfortable, aggressive fighter, it is Gallimore who is now adapting and is moving the counter punch with the same time using his jab. So he's allowing Julian Williams to come forward. And a big right hand that connected right through the guard of Trey Williams. He's hurt. 
Stop, 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 stop. Let him out. Williams with the deep breath, the left hook. Let him go, let him go. It's Mark for Gallimore, not Gallimore. What's an uppercut? Gallimore really applying the pressure as Lynn seems to be stacking. Tail end of the fourth round. This has been an action pack four here in Las Vegas. As the Jamaican fans, you are hearing them voice their appreciation for Nate Gallimore. Coming up, a rematch from December of last year. Caleb Truex, who won a world title at the age of 34 from Minnesota, went to London, not making his Las Vegas debut against the first man to become a world champion and claim Olympic gold for England, that being this man, James DeGale. DeGale has vowed if I cannot beat Caleb Truex, in this rematch, I will retire at the age of 32. That coming up next from Las Vegas. Round five, this one is scheduled for 12. This is an IBF junior middleweight eliminator matchup. The winner will have a date with the winner of Lada and Herb. The IBF champion, Jared Hurd, he puts his title on the line later tonight against it is Landy Lada. I gave that fourth round to Nate Gallimore. So on my scorecard, three to one in favor of Julian Williams. Now we'll see if Gallimore decides to be the aggressor or if he goes back to the game plan that he did in the fourth. And that's be more of the counter puncher, but also jab as well. Williams. Now Williams is the one who isn't throwing the jab with as much frequency as he would like it. And you know what? It's so emblematic, and there's a reason why they say the jab is the most fundamental punch in boxing. It sets up everything else. When Gallimore was active committing to the jab, he had success in the fourth. I had him winning the round. In the first three rounds, it was Julie Williams using his jab, coming forward, tying up Nate Gallimore. Gallimore shakes his head and he sort of blows his nose for a quick second. 100 seconds left here in the fifth. And just based on sheer ring generalship, I give the first half of this round to Nate Gallimore. Take some water on. You watching that uppercut? Listen, I'm gonna stop good. screaming for you to box if if you need a second win. You hear what I'm Keep saying? Keep him back. Keep him back. 
And let's take a look at, this is where it might have happened, as that is a clash of heads right there, boom. And that is above the left eye of Julian Williams. So it was not caused from a punch, it was caused from a headbutt. Mike Rodriguez working back on, a jet. on the cut of Julian Williams. There you see the lovely Tawny Jordan joining us here in Las Vegas. Nate Gallimore and Julian Williams. Mike Rodriguez, a very good cut man, one of the best in the business. Working on that left eye. The cut above the left eye of Julian Williams. And what stood out in that, in what we heard from Stephen Edwards telling Julian Williams, he goes, it looks like you're fighting with demons. He goes, to give you a second win, I'm in a shot for you to box when I think you need to. And Julian Williams hasn't been the same in the fourth and the fifth. We'll see what we see here in the sixth. I don't know if it's hesitation or that he's fighting timid, but he looked very good in the first three rounds. But in the fourth, you saw like a change for Gallimore. using his jab and really being, and using more of his physical ability to impose his will upon Julian Williams. Gallimore felt like he could crack Williams and that Williams would succumb to his pressure. And Williams, a nice left hook that connected by Gallimore. Big right hand though by Julian Williams. That was his best punch in the mind. Two rounds plus. Now Gallimore talking to Williams, kind of baiting him on the inside, maybe setting up a potential uppercut there. Stop, stop, I got you. Coming up on 80 seconds to go here in the sixth. Stop, stop. The corner stop, of Gallimore stop, stop, urging stop, stop. him to attack Here we go. the body. But Gallimore is being active here. And Williams with shots to the body. And Gallimore trying to take control, sticking that jab in the face of Williams, but Williams jabbing as well. Williams no, 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 stop, 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 stop. Stop. Turn around. Right now, Julian Williams has gotten back to his pacing. Left hook to the body by Williams. Oh, he needs to separate a little bit and shoot a right stop, hand stop, stop. as Gallimore has his head down for a brief second. Gallimore has his head down, like tilted to the side. Williams should take a step to his right, have a step to his right, and then throw that right hand. I don't know if Gallimore would be prepared for that. Especially because Gallimore is in his jab mindset. No, 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 stop. Let, let him up, let him up, let him up. Turn around. That's the end of the six. We're halfway home. Accidental. This is what I need. I need you to catch your breath. Stay relaxed. Now, I need you to let your hands go in combinations, okay? I need you punching a little more, okay? Because these rounds, it's hard to tell, and they're probably going to give them those close rounds. I, I need you to punch when you Take get close to them. Deep breath and let it out slow. Deep breath. Let it out slow. Don't forget your jab. Don't forget your, take, your, your recoup now, right? There were too many right hands, Nate. No right. good. Okay, don't take nothing for granted. And here is Gallimore with that left hook. And Williams, look, you look at Gallimore now, trying to find that opening. There was that jab followed by, as you see Gallimore looking for his opening. Using the jab was Gallimore round seven. So far through the first half of the fight, I give that sixth round to Williams. So I have Williams ahead four to two against Gallimore. Again, that's just my unofficial, unbiased scorecard. But you heard John Coleman tell Gallimore, he goes, look, they're going to give these close rounds. It is quite possible they're going to give these close rounds to Williams. And I saw that being a close round, but enough to where Williams was more active than Gallimore. Stop, stop, I got you, stop. We all the bottom of the head. 
Davis. Left kick to the body by Julian Williams. And Williams comes from Philadelphia, grew up old school. Stephen Edwards says he's quite high and believes that Julian Williams will absolutely claim championship gold. They learned quite a bit in that stop, fight stop, against I got you. Jamal He's got to be more aggressive. He's got to throw punches when Delamore throws and has high volume and high work rate. It is more to his benefit. Stop, I got you. More punches that are thrown in the round, it favors Delamore. The more slow plotting tactical fight would favor Williams. A big right hand on the temple of Delamore as Williams goes inside. Williams steps inside with the left kick. Sitting down in his punches is Julian Williams. Stop, I got you, Lemma. Williams has that laceration and has been halted above his left eye from the clash of heads two rounds ago. I got you, I got you, Lemma. in Gallimore. And again, this is the kind of round that favors Julian Williams. Because he's tying up, he's making stop, this stop. a fight where Gallimore's having a hard time getting off here in the sixth and the seventh. As you saw in the fourth and fifth, in which Gallimore won clearly. Stop, I got you. Let him up. Boxing well, using the ring, getting a lot of leverage behind his shots. That's right hand that. Stop, 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 stop. The guard of Williams. Passed up to by Gallimore. Stop, and stop. Again, when this fight is being held at close distance, and when Williams is crowding Gallimore, this I got you, I got you. is the kind of round that Williams wants. Because Gallimore isn't able to land and get off as much as he stop, wants. Stop, stop, stop. Watch out there. Stop, stop, stop. Stages of the seven. That's the end of the seven. Do right. You remember that? Yeah. Keep shoving. Keep breathing. Um, Yes. And here we take a look at Nate Gallimore with that left hook followed by that right hand. Partially grazing right hand by Nate Gallimore. But so far as we up, watch the uppercut. See. Yep. Eighth, eighth. Four. Four. This is what you want, mental warfare, baby. We got it. Go. Do not go. stay off the ropes. John Pullman telling Nick Gallimore to stay off the ropes. He goes, this is what you want, mental warfare. Well, so far, Julian Williams, he surrendered round four and five, but has taken over here in six and seven. Williams asking Stephen Bremen and Edwards what round this is. And they also you, urged Williams to watch out for the uppercut. It was that uppercut which did him in in the fight with Jamal Charles, at least that started the downward movement, you, stop, stop, stop. the downward spiral for Julian Williams, dating back to that his lone loss in December of 2016. The winner of this fight will be the number one contender of the IBF. Jimmy Middleweight Crown, currently held by Swift Jared Hurd. That could change tonight as Hurd puts his title on the line, along with Eslandi Lada, who put his WBA title. Stop, 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 stop. Let him up, stop. Williams and Gallimore both connect at the same time. Gallimore needs to keep his distance. Gallimore cannot stop, stop, stop. too long. 
He's got to use his jab, and again, in the fourth and fifth round, when he's using his jab and sticking in the face of Williams, he was able to get off. He was using his space. He was creating distance. He was gaining leverage. Stop, but stop. this Lama. kind of fight, where Williams is jabbing his way on the inside, tying up Gallimore, frustrating the 29-year-old, this favors Julian Williams. Because Williams is stop, doing stop. enough to be able to, he's aggressive enough, he's throwing more punches to get the attention of the judges. A sharp right hand on the inside that connected for Williams. Followed by a left hook. And Gallimore, instead of coming forward, should step back. Step back and then throw that uppercut. Stop, 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 no more. Or step to his side, step to his right, and then throw a right hand. I know easier said than done, but Williams is at close distance. This Stop, is no, I got you. I got you. the fight in which he wants. And Gallimore throws a left uppercut, but that misses. Stop, 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 and stop. Williams him is up, just up. barreling into Gallimore. And Gallimore, where's the jab here? As Williams is coming forward, there was no jab. And whereas Williams is coming in, he's tying up Gallimore. I got you, stop, stop. Him. Stop, stop. Tony Weeks is a Shot downstairs by Gallimore. Ten seconds remaining here in the eighth. And Williams almost goes into the front row, at least through the ropes. That ends the eighth. Punch, when he walks to you, that's when you punch downstairs and upstairs. He'll stop coming in. Just keep your knees bent, hands up, go to the body, go to the head, and then turn so his back's against the ropes. Do you hear me? And you got to pull your left hand out of there. Talk to me. What you going to do? Huh? Yeah, you, yeah, and then bring him to the head. He's just wrestling what you're trying to make As you tired. we observe some of the work yeah. from round eight, Julian Williams ducking underneath the left hook. And you see J-Rock close distance inside. And a right hand, boom. So I have it six to two in favor of Julian Williams. I can also see that round going to Gallimore. So six to two in favor of Julian Williams, at least on my unofficial card. Julian Williams is doing what he needs to to gain the advantage. Sometimes you have to have, you're involved in fights like this, which are fight at close distance and you're stop, not able stop, to gain a lot of leverage behind your shots. But who is going to be the one to throw more punches? Who's going to be the one to stop, stop. literally no, no. impose their will upon the other man? Williams walking in tonight at 170, Gallimore at 161. Big shot by Williams, staggered Gallimore. And Gallimore stationary and when John stop, 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 was speaking stop, stop. with Gallimore you, you could hear the gasp of breath that Gallimore is trying to gain and they are urging and telling Gallimore as I hear stop, stop, over I here you. the corner John Pullman he goes as Williams is coming on the inside we need a punch and when Williams has been coming forward, tying up Gallimore, he has not been doing it. Stop, stop. And also, from the fifth round, we have seen a lack of a jab from Gallimore. Whereas Williams is jabbing at times, he's throwing punches to the body, he's finding those openings on the inside. Stop, 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 stop! Stop, And Gallimore telling Tony Reeves about it, he's leaving with his head. It's all within the realm of the rules. Stop, stop, stop. Maybe seconds remaining here in the night. Gallimore going with the body. I got to stop, stop. Also make sure wherever you're joining us around the world, participate in the social media conversation. Follow me at SBR Flores. Again, that is at SBR Flores right now. The action is intensifying. Between Gallimore and Upper Club, stop, stop, stop. right here. But with the exception of those two punches, it has been Julian Williams who is about hustling. Nate Gallimore here tonight. Nice jab by Williams. Stop, I got you. Let me go. Julian Williams, both 
close distance, within range of each other. Straight right hand by Gallimore moments ago. Williams with that jab. And Gallimore using the uppercut, but to no avail. Stop, 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 stop. Let him go. Jab for Joy Williams. That is the end of the ninth. Catch your breath. Breathe, relax. Every time you punch, okay? Every time you punch in space, you hurt him and bother him. But what you're doing is you're accepting clinches. Do not accept a clinch. When he walks to you, bend your knees with your hands up and punch two, three punches. The body and the head. And then feign him, use your jab here and there. When he wants to wrestle with you, stay relaxed. And as soon as you get space, that's and when you look to see punch. The left hook Fast that punch. Julie Williams started to implement. That was a big left hook that caught the attention of Gallimore. And Gallimore bent, you could tell he was clipped and he felt that upstairs, boom. Right there on the jaw of Gallimore, and he shot the right hand by Julian Williams. But again, we'll go back, and here's a big right hand from Julian Williams. The jab set it up, and then Williams, boom, right there, catching the jump of Nate Gallimore, round 10. Stop, stop, stop. And Coleman telling Gallimore, he goes, look, I need you to stop getting involved in these clinches. I have Williams at comfortably six to two. I can see it seven to two or six to three. But there were some close rounds in there. And with the way judging is in boxing, you never know they're gonna have it. And Gallimore trying to tie the uppercut as Williams came forward. Body by Williams. Another one. Gallimore's focused on head hunting, whereas Williams is pounding away on the body of Gallimore. Stop, stop, stop. I got you. And Gallimore, when he's tied up, he isn't even doing anything to try to get away from the break. He's not trying to create distance. He's just accepting these clinches, which he was admonished by by his corner. Stop, I got you. The walk by Joe Williams to the body of Gallimore. And Williams is just so tough and girl. Julian Williams, big right hand. Destination backing up and shot the uppercut on the inside by, by a left uppercut by Williams. Williams is summoning the will to try to break Gallimore. And he used his shoulder to get Gallimore off of him and he followed that up with a straight right hand. Gallimore looking for that big shot. That big shot from round six on has not been there. Joey Williams has shown this new wrinkle to his game. You knew that he was slick and that he had good boxing ability. I got you. But he is just, this is a very close inside fight. And Williams is getting the better of these exchanges. And Gallimore has shown a tendency to hesitate. And on right hand, stop, stop, I got you. Williams. So a lot of the talk in which Gallimore Emma, did, stop, 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 so stop. far, Emma. he has been unable to back up when it comes to how uh, vociferous he was regarding his ability to break Julian Williams. He's not been able to do that. Williams is ah. doing his talking inside the ring. And coming up, our co-feature, Caleb Truex. Puts his IBF Super Middleweight crown on the line for the first time in the rematch against 
from England, James DeGale. Halo Truax, the father of one there. You see James DeGale, very focused, ready. He says he's totally healthy now. That was a bad night. He will rectify that defeat with the win here tonight. Two more rounds remaining in this matchup. Flores ringside here in Las Vegas, round 11. This one's scheduled for 12. Julian Williams and Nate Gallimore. I can see it's seven to three or eight to two for J-Rock. But Gallimore has got to really come on strong. Gallimore actually separated from his trainer, George Hernandez, prior to this fight. He said he just clicked on with John Bowman and loves living in California. They got very good sparring as well in preparation for this fight. And Williams just wrestling Gallimore. Big right hand by Gallimore, followed by a left hook. Gallimore stepping into his side, but he's been unable to connect stop, with that stop, left I got hook. You. It was that left hook by Gallimore which sent Jason Rosario to the canvas last April. Shot on the inside by Gallimore. Gallimore pressing Williams against the ropes, but back comes Williams to regain the center of the ring. Uppercut by Julie Williams. Stop, stop, I got you. Halfway point of the 11. Oh, a big left hook for Julie Williams, followed by a right cross. Two right crosses. Gallimore seems to be hurt. Julie Williams unloading on Gallimore. Gallimore backing up. Big left hook by Williams. Williams with a left hook. Stop, stop, I got you. Up. With that left hook by Julian Williams. He may be out on his feet. Julian Williams looking to gain an emphatic stoppage. What a sweet victory this would be for the Philadelphia native. Amidst all the talking Nate Gallimore did in the lead up to this fight, stop, 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 stop. Williams to be able to gain the stoppage would be so apropos in his mind. Big right hand by Williams. Williams really unloading upon Gallimore. He dips down. Does Gallimore looking to tie up, but he is literally on the very wobbly legs. Williams tattooing Gallimore. Stop, stop, stop. I got you. Williams stalking Nate Gallimore. Gallimore was hurt big time with that left hook that started off for Julian Williams, but he's been able to remain vertical. Julian Williams and Gallimore stumbling to his corner. Sit down. Sit down. Talk to me, Nate. Sit down. Give me a mouthpiece. How you feel? Huh? How you feel? Good, huh? hey, what? You right, man? Look at me. Yeah. Tell me what year it is. How you doing? Tell me the year. What year? Uh -huh. And here we see the work. This is what started it all. Boom, that big left talk by Julian Williams. And you saw Williams with that right cross, followed by uppercuts, and Williams knew that he had Gallimore hurt. Good to go. And we'll take a look at it again from close distance. Boom! There it was, and you saw the body language of Gallimore totally change. I think he's fine, but you know what to do. Okay, you got it, brother. I need you to hook I need you to hook with him. Talk to me. Can you talk to me? Can you do what I'm asking you to do? Can you do what I'm asking you to do? Here. Can you do what I'm asking you to do? Can you do what I'm asking you to do? Talk to me. Now do it then. John Pullman trying to get every bit of last bit inspiration to Gallimore. He asked him three times, can you do what I'm asking you to do? And Gallimore got himself up by putting his left hand on the top rope to walk to the center of the ring. 
Williams. I think Gallimore's still hurt, and I wonder if Williams knows that. Julian Williams has certainly showcased that he can really dig down deep. Not that he couldn't do it before, but against a guy who has been so chastising him, beating him in the lead up to this fight, Julian Williams has come out and is displaying how tough he is and without question making Philadelphia proud. I got you. Steven Edwards should be absolutely thrilled with what he has seen out of stop, stop, stop. Williams. Stop. Watch that. This would be a sweet, satisfying birthday, late birthday present for Keep Julian on, Williams, which has just turned 28 two days ago. Yeah, 100 seconds left here in the fight. Stop, 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 stop. And Tony Week separates them, but Julian Williams was able to adjust. He was jabbing a lot in the first half of the fight. And now he's been able to close the distance. Nice little sharp uppercut as he took a step back and connected I against stop, Gallimore. Stop, 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 stop. But Gallimore has just gone to sort of survival mode. No, no, stop, stop, stop. The doctor went inside the ring to check on Gallimore, asked him what year it was. And he said Gallimore's fine. But still, what is this ability by Julian Williams, who is changed up his game plan, jabbed on the inside, unboxing Gallimore, and then he decided to pressure Gallimore after the fifth round. I got you, When Gallimore was having success, tying him up, throwing more punches than him, finding the openings, and John Coleman still is really letting Gallimore know to keep punching. Stop, 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 Gallimore stop. Gallimore has no, been no. less active tonight than what we've seen in his previous seven straight victories by stoppage. Stop, stop. I got you. Williams ties up. They have 22 seconds left to do something big. This will be a very big victory for Drew Williams. And now Williams is talking to Gallimore inside the ring. This would be vindication for the man known as J-Rock. Straight right hand that connected by Gallimore. And ah. that is the end of the fight. And they don't even embrace Julian Williams with his hand raised. And he has every right to be thrilled and excited because he looked terrific tonight. Hey, man, that's how you put it. Got any pain anywhere? No. Good to me. Good, my shot. Gallimore. Fight, huh? You can tell it's disappointed. We appreciate all of you joining us wherever you are in the UK, all Australia, all over the world. All we appreciate your all love and staying on the with us. All that talk they were talking to you. You're a regular motherfucker. Yeah, he's yeah. in the big league now. He's in the big league. Gotta come to you. Yeah, Sam, I said, you showed your experience. You showed everything on this motherfucker. I don't know, man. The first thing he tried to play a poker game like it wasn't hurting you, but it was hurting like a motherfucker. You had that shit. I don't know if you know the last round he couldn't even throw. The last round he couldn't even throw. But he couldn't even throw. He was so tired. Boy, you a bad man, Jack. Rodriguez, one of the best cut men in the business working on that left cut off the eye of Julian Williams and Gallimore. You can tell that you know, you know, you ain't mad at him for all that time. You know, with what he saw out of the fact that Gallimore did not listen to Pullman. He would, Pullman was telling him, we want you to be active. And here's Julian Williams. And Williams with that straight right hand to the body. And you know what? The body work of Julian Williams has to be touched on because Williams really focused on hooks to the body. And that seemed to take away some of the steam from Nate Gallimore. And also, Williams' chest was in the chest of Nate Gallimore. I don't know if Gallimore was ready for Julian Williams to step to him and to be in his chest in the way that he did. I think that Gallimore and his entire team thought that Williams was going to box as we saw him in the first three rounds. And then Gallimore was successful in the fourth and the fifth. But then Stephen Edwards, the trainer of Julian Williams, they made an adjustment and they decided to find the inside. And that was the best decision they could have made. Made you work harder. Made you work harder. And now we'll set up three rounds for his chicken line. You got him like looking good. Hey, Mike, you got him looking good, Mike. Damn, you did a miracle, you did a miracle.
Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. Here are our score totals. Judge at ringside, Patricia Morse Jarman scores about 114 to 114, even a draw. Overruled by judges Eric Cheek. He scores about 116 to 112. And Max DeLuca scoring about 117 to 110 in favor of the winner by way of majority decision. He is the winner of the IBF Junior Middleweight World Title Eliminator, Julian J. Rock Williams. So Julian Williams wins by majority decision. Scores were 114, 114, 116, 112, 117, 110. I thought that was deserved. It should have been unanimous. But that draw upsets me a little bit out of Patricia Moore's drumming, but nonetheless, Julian Williams gets a majority decision victory. He becomes hey, the hey, number hey, one Nate. contender. You happy now? And Julian Williams talking to Nick Gallimore. He goes, are you Be happy Be humble now? next time. It's a different level up here. Be humble next time. Tell him Gallimore, be humble next time. Because it's a different level up here. Philadelphia, man. In Philadelphia, I ain't scared nobody. And Joey Williams absolutely made Philadelphia proud of that performance. As you heard Jillian Williams say, there are different levels to this. And Jillian Williams went ahead and he stand just up. Well, give me some water, Mike. Nate Gallimore. Williams didn't say much in the lead up to this fight. And he went ahead and he allowed his actions to do the talking. Now, once again, Julian Williams primes himself in position for a world title shot go, in baby. the very near future. As Nate Gallimore walks to the dressing room, certainly some things for Gallimore to work on. He'll be back. But Julian Williams and Stephen Edwards, together they are absolutely smiling from ear to ear. It wasn't easy, but that's how you get the victory. You have to adjust. And Julian Williams did that. As we're here at the joint at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Ray Flores joining you. A very good evening or good morning. And coming up, Caleb Truex defends his IBF Super Middleweight crown in a rematch against James DeGale in which he ripped away from in London of last year. We're going to go back a little bit to 2015, November of 2015, when that man, James DeGale, he fought the hometown favorite in Canada, Lucien Boutin. As we go ahead and take a look, here we see James DeGale walking out, making his way to the ring. This was back in Canada. Very focused and relaxed. This was in November of 2015 in Quebec City. DeGale, that was his second straight fight in North America. Prior to that, spent quite a ways, a long time in England. A big right hand there by DeGale. As you saw him fight the hometown favorite in Lucien Boutin. You saw DeGale looking for the opening and stepping inside with that big right hand. And Boutin was just not able to do enough against DeGale. DeGale showing how sharp he is. Unorthodox punches, winging shots that connected, that got through the guard of Boutin. Punches with such ferocity with his combinations. 
This was when DeGale was really feeling and having such momentum after claiming the victory over Andre Durand to claim the IBF super middleweight crown. He looked very sharp. He was never in any imminent danger. And Boutte was showing signs that he was in the latter parts of his 30s. DeGale at this time was just 29 years of age. And look at how DeGale was just all over the place. He stuck his tongue out at Boutte. He was having fun in the ring. And with the man known as Chunky, he was boxing well. Boutte was pressuring him. But DeGale again sticking out his tongue to show him that he is. DeGale was cut above his left eye in the fight, but that didn't impair his vision one bit. And DeGale just so comfortable, setting into, it, selling into his game plan. And Boutte was throwing punches. The fans were trying to urge on Boutte to dig deep and really come out with the victory. But again, DeGale frustrating Boutte. but he did claim the victory, did James DeGale. And he left with the belt you, from Quebec City, taking it back home to England. Go, James. Go, James DeGale, victorious. Uh -huh. That was back in November of 2015. Good, good, though. You did the good, James. And DeGale smiled at the end. Mama will be happy. I should be loving you. From Hylesden, <laughs> England. I know, but what happened to me? And the Gale, he will make his way to the ring. Coming up here in a few moments, looking to go ahead and reclaim his championship. A fight that he lost at the hands of Caleb Truax. That was in November or December of last year, DeGale said that he got into the ring too quickly. He had surgery to repair an injured shoulder. Did James DeGale, he had it in June of last year, and he said that he just rushed into the ring too much. He was returning to the ring after an 11-month layoff because of injury. 
Originally, Truax was supposed to be a tune-up, a chance to knock off some runs before moving on to bigger bouts, but Truax had other plans. Now for DeGale, when describing the seriousness of his shoulder problems, he said, I had a 100 degree, 80 degree tear on my shoulder. My AC joint needed stabilizing and a tear in my rotator cup. Nevada, I gotta tell you, there's nothing like being here in the fighting capital of the world. The IBF super middleweight crown is on the line. Caleb Truex, who is putting his title on the line for the first time in the rematch against James DeGale. DeGale, and now we'll set up. We are ready for our rematch world championship attraction. Please welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, we present the challenger and former world champion from England, James Chunky. for this fight. He said, Truex has tasted what it's like to be a world champion. He's going to be hungry and have that burning desire to beat me. At the end of the day, I'm just too good for him, and I'm going to prove it. Way to the ring, the defending IBF super middleweight champion of the world from Osseo, Minnesota, Golden Caleb Truex. And here is the champion, Golden Caleb Truex. He's won three in a row. Claimed the world title with a victory over James DeGale in December. 11-year pro just celebrated his 11th year as a professional yesterday. His pro debut April 6th of 2007. A former college football player who died in the boxing by watching a tournament contest and said, I should give it a try. He had his amateur career cut short because the amateur section body said Truax couldn't continue because the top man is considered above amateur. His goal when he turned pro was just to pay off his student loans. Truax did that in the summer of last year, but he has since exceeded his expectations by winning a world title. His nickname is Golden because he went to the University of Minnesota. He said, everyone told me to show me so much love. I'm be busier than what I used to be. But I got him applying pressure and seeing how he reacts. And if he doesn't adjust, then I don't see it going in. In the first fight, I'm real confident that I'm going to stop James DeGale this time. He's coming out to win Doug's crime by Prince. Him, both Prince and Caleb Truex being from Minnesota, tribute to Prince. As you see, Caleb Truex, who is looking to make his first successful title defense here in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen from the joint here at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, we bring to you our next attraction as Premier Boxing Champions presents a world title bout, and it's brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Showtime. We are sponsored by Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach and Casa Noble Tequila, the noble pursuit. This bout is presented in association with Warriors Boxing and is sanctioned by the IBF, the President, Daryl Peoples, 
Supervisor Randy Newman. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Robert Hoyle. From New York, John McKay. And from Noank, Connecticut, Don Trella. Presenting our referee in charge of the action, our third man in the ring, Hall of Fame referee, Robert Bird. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing in a rematch for the IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first on my left, the challenger fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks, fighting out of Harlesden by way of St. Albans, England. He weighed in at 167 and one quarter pounds. His record stands at 23 wins, two losses in one draw with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. As the first British fighter to win both Olympic gold and a professional world title, tonight he is looking to exact his revenge and to regain the belt. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the IBF number eight ranked contender and the former IBF super middleweight champion of the world, introducing James Chunky DeGale. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion. On my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with maroon and gold trim, hailing from Osseo, Minnesota. He weighed in at 167 and three quarter pounds. His record, 29 wins. Three losses and two draws, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in his first defense of his world title, introducing the newly crowned and reigning IBF super middleweight champion of the world, introducing Golden Caleb Truax. Once again, a referee in charge, Robert Bird, now to give instructions. Okay. Gentlemen, I gave you your instructions in the dressing room. Only thing I'm going to remind you of now is when I tell you stop, what that means is you stop whatever you're doing, give me a clean break. Protect yourself at all times and obey my commands at all times. Anything on this band or above is going to be good. On the band or above is going to be good. Mr. DeGale, Mr. Truax, gentlemen, let's do this. This is our co-main event. For the IBF Super Middleweight Crown, here's our tale of the tape. You see trucks two years older than DeGale. They are similar in weight and reach as well, but the height advantage in favor of James DeGale. This is our co-main event. Caleb Truax looking to make his first successful title defense and prove to the naysayers that the first fight was not a fluke. James DeGale is hoping to prove that he is superior then Caleb Truax and proved that the first fight was just a bad night. The Gale was softball conventional for Truax. As the Gale, trainer Jim McDonald, also Paulie Malinage, who's not in the corner of James the Gale, was a consultant for this fight. Yes, as he's Stop. totally healthy and Break. ready to go. Here we go. Truex said following the fight with Degel the first time, they got into the gym right before Christmas. So this has been his longest training camp, but also he states it has been his best training camp. Truex wearing the colors of Minnesota, white with the burgundy and gold. And the trucks is James Degel with Chucky right across. That is his nickname. He had that nickname ever since he was a kid. difficult to beat. But Truex looks very big and strong walking into the fight. Truex gained 12 and a half pounds. He's inside the ring at 180. DeGale gained seven and a quarter pounds. One don't push, don't push, don't push. For DeGale entering the ring here this evening. Let's go. 
Work your way out. Work your way out. Punch it. Get out. Punch it. Get out. Referee in charge. Just over a minute and change left here in this first round. DeGail using his jab and Shuex following him with that straight right hand. Watch your hands. Watch your hands. You heard it. I thought it was caused from that straight left, but it was, look at this headbutt right there on the, oh my goodness, right on the mouth of Caleb Truex. Yeah, that, that was very accidental. Close, breathe. Box, yeah. good jab, James. Fight loads of feints. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
under 10 seconds left here in the second. We are in the books. And we'll take a look once again at the clash of heads. We had one in the first, and here is the one in the second again as Miguel ducks his head and boom, lands again. Thankfully for Truex. To your left, short right hand, that's what you caught him with, and you're going to catch him with that all night long. Don't lean on it, sit on it. Nice and deep. You're not cutting off the ring either. You're kind of following him around a bit, okay? Cut that ring off, quick foot him, quick foot him. In the corner of Caleb Truex. This happens a third time. Don't just straight left to the body. Not easy shot. Mouthpiece. Oh, Chan, bring for us. Box him off, sticks your box in. And you're scared for us straight because you can't land nothing. Keep him that way. Olympic, Olympic out. We have seen two clash of heads in the first and the second round. The first time I get it, but it would appear as if Miguel is using that hand more as a lead instead of it just being accidental. If it happens a third time, it without question was not accidental. It was intentional. And you saw he just put his head right as the truck got forward and put his head right there and kind of put it forward. So I mean, these are all veteran-like tactics, but things that I don't personally, from an ethical standpoint, agree with. A chair followed by a straight left that connected forward to Gale. But if you're Truex, you have to be able to deal with, now that he's fighting here in Las Vegas, both fighters incidentally making their Las Vegas debuts. You gotta really start to implement your game plan and getting active here. The jab for Truex, let's see if he can do it. The guy against the ropes. Let go, let go, three up. Get the shield out, get the shield out. Jay, rinse that shield. Nice work. Little drink, Jay. Jay, you're boxing his head off, mate. Hey there, Jay. Get the towel off and you'll see goodbye from Mark. Come on, we'll have a little drop. Take time, James. James, keep boxing, James. He's very frustrated. Oh, yeah. And the left uppercut is walking back, in. And here is a very a big right hand by Caleb Truex. Boom. As DeGale was 
And here we see where the laceration was caused as the Gale and Truex, boom, there it was. And the laceration started right there. Was it? Credit to... I didn't see it. I'll call it a punch. Here. In Las Let's Vegas go. for a check and see. It. That is where the cut started. So there have been three headbutts that have been issued by two on the job. Punch you get out, now punch you get out. The Gale at 174, so that's a six go. pound difference. They weighed in at 167 pounds. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 
to Gale, wiped off the run as he was affected his vision. But back comes Truex. Truex with this relentless pressure, and to Gale has to find some way to keep Truex out of the way. He might have to pick up Truex. And we see that Truex is. is Truex. Watch your head. Watch your head. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. With five seconds left. Slide it in. Let's go. Roll time, let's go. Final 10 seconds of the fifth. Hold up, guys. Let's go on time. Time! That's the end of the fifth. That's it, nice and calm, calm James, calm. Oh, yeah, Let's just clean you up. You're boxing well James. James, settle down on the jab. When he comes in, look to shoot the left uppercut. That's the shot. And the body shots are beautiful, Jay. Take the right hand off him, go. Give him a little drink, give him a little drink. Oh, yeah, Jay, that's Good. And here is some of the action. Concentration, James. Take the right hand off him. The fifth round. As you see Truax applying the pressure, big right hand by the world champion. <laughs> round six. So I gave that fifth round to DeGale. I have this a very close fight. In favor of one. Punch you get out, punch you get out, punch you get out. Let's go, let's go, let's work. Stop. Here we go. Stop. Here we go. Right now, you see whoa, 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 watch that form. Oh, Let's keep working. Keep working. Let's go. We are just over the midway point. Truex and DeGale tying up. How you get out? How you get out? going to stick inside there because they're not. Either one of them is doing anything significant. DeGale separates. If you're trying to get out of the way, the blood can 
continues to pour on that right side. He looks up. Thumbs up. There's the game, the big screen. Wiping away his right arm. Free. Free up your hands. Free up your hands. And go, True. Why don't you get out? DeGale knows he's in a tough battle against the Chester Gale Truex. You got him hooked, Truex. Punch. Punch and get out. Final moment of the sixth. Five, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bell! We are. Get a shield, James. James! Shoot. Right, James, this is what I'm telling you. Nice deep breath, nice deep breath. Win these rounds. Yeah. Get on it, now listen. When he walks, touch him, touch him with a jab. Yeah. When he walks, you shoot the, shoot the left uppercut. Yeah. It's working. Right, right. And, and Chang. Yeah, let's take Good boy, a look back it. And, and Chang. As Truex, with that big right hand that backed up James DeGale. What a shot by Caleb Truex. The jab followed by that right hand. Boom. It was partially blocked, but still DeGale felt the effects. James, take the right hand off him! They are working very hard to stop that cut, but still. It is continuing to lead for James DeGale. Round seven, this one's scheduled for 12. All right, this is a close fight. But if you're Caleb Truex, he's got to close the distance. He's got to get off early. DeGale here bouncing. Him losing every bit of that ring is something that he needs to continue to do. against Truex. He has been doing very well so far against the 
Minnesota native. I got it. Stop fire now. James! What's that? Oh my. You gotta step up from that left hand then throw your right hand. Alright. You gotta drop my piece. Yeah, I got it. Let's go. Speed up your hands a little bit, okay? You're trying to load up. You're trying to load up. Pick at him a little bit more. Okay, pick at him. That way you can sit back a little bit, okay? Sit back, pick at him, pick at him, pick at him. Right now you're trying to hold the goal, okay? That upper comes there all night long. He's ducking right into it, okay? Read him. I need you to zero the fuck in right now, okay? There you see Errol Spence. In a couple weeks' time, looking for being in New York for that one. Round eight, this one's scheduled for 12. Got him hooked! Got him hooked! The corner of James DeGale telling him just box. Every bit of it. You're hooking him, let him go! to close the distance. So now both Truex and DeGale are cut over 
Let's go. Let's go. You got to fight, man. Let's go. And in the corner of Truex, they said, you got to fight. Let's go. Well, no kidding. No kidding. His world title was hanging in the balance. This Caleb Truex. Out of the Minnesota native. between James DeGale and Caleb Truax. That left hook is there for you, but what you're doing is you're leaving your left hand so damn low yeah. and you're just hugging on it. Too far, yeah. All right? Find that mid find that mid range. Throw that hook. Throw those uppercuts. All right? Yeah. Everything's yeah. there for you. You just gotta execute it. Win off, just win these rounds. Just keep winning the rounds. Balls, balls, balls! Take the right hand off him! Great work, great work. Yeah, you see the lovely Tawny here in Las Vegas, round seven. This one's scheduled for 12. James DeGale looking to reclaim his IBF super middleweight pound that he lost to Caleb Truax. Truax with his rematch looking to make his first successful time in the And the Truax telling him, you want to see hooks. Well, so far, Truax, with the exception of a couple of big right hands in the third and the fourth round, hasn't been doing anything that has been successful. He's just been tying up and again, nothing is transpiring here. DeGale should not have to deal with this much as he's dealing with in both guys have had. You know, two headbutts from DeGale. Three headbutts from DeGale. One by Truex. You have to gain control if you're with the referee. Seven seconds have elapsed and there comes Truex. With some combination punching. As DeGale 
looks up at the clock again. You got him hooked, you got him hooked, let him go. Jim McDonald, they want to see more combination punching out of James DeGale as we near the halfway mark of round 10. Let's go. Get off his necks. Again, crowding to Gale. All right, stop, isn't stop, stop back. Anything substantial. Let's go. Gale on his toes. Jabbing. Shrex. You hook him, let him go. Free up your hands, free up your hands. You got him hooked again, let him go. Right now, Truex isn't doing Stop. anything. Over there, over there. Finally, Robert Bird. One point, shoulder. One point, One shoulder. One point, shoulder. One point, shoulder. I told you don't do that no more. Don't do it. Let's go, box. I don't understand. The Gale warning. He warned. He said he warned the Gale, but he took a point away. What is Robert Bird doing? And I hate to lump in the entire family, but Step Adelaide out. Burton, don't push. The judge had a horrendous night tonight with calling on Fredo and Gulo a draw and scoring the fight against Sergio Moore in his paper. And now Robert Bird is having a terrible night. And that ends the 10th. That point, that deduction in point is incomprehensible. Come on, son. Jake? By James. James is not on the defense. Listen, the way you finished that round was how you got to do it. That was good because that's how you're going to win rounds. That was the James de Gaulle flowing. Keep him still, mate. The James? Listen carefully, he's to change. Here we see where the point deduction was. De Gaulle with a little bit of a shoulder. And you call it deduction and point that? Like, come on. That was a that was a boxing move. It wasn't deliberate to sort of gain a lot of leverage. Let's look at it again. Our great camera work. It was just a little slight nudge as Truex was the one who was initiating the hold. I cannot even begin to describe or even defend that. You gotta take these rounds big. Like James the Gale is visibly upset. I would be too. Can you imagine if for some reason this is a fight that is close on the scorecards, which I do not have, by the way. I have James the Gale comfortably ahead. Who knows at that point who would be possible? It shouldn't, but we don't know. Get on, get it. Nonetheless, the championship rounds, the IBF Super Middleweight crown, Gale Drex defending his title, the family man is two years old.
2x. Oh, no, get off his neck. Get off his neck. But so far it has been the James oh, Gale show. Stop. The Gale. His right side of his face is a bloody mess. Truex's face is showing some wear and tear as well. From the clutch of heads and also the work of James DeGale. Oh, stop, guys. Stop. 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 And here is the uppercut by James DeGale as Truax snuck it right in. Boom. That was beautiful. A right uppercut by James DeGale. Nice inside fighting by James DeGale as you see his ability to outwork Caleb Truax. A chopping right hand by Truax. By DeGale, I stand corrected. Ducks into your uppercut, okay? He's the champ stepping outside and going up. Oh, you got this. All right? Long, Caleb. This is your night, fight. Both Last round. This is it, Caleb. This is it. Into the fight. Let's go now. Sharp, short, short uppercut right. off the jam. Let's go.
once again the world champion. Don't need him. Don't need him. Don't need him. Don't need him. Just stay here, James. James, James, James. Just stay here, 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 James. As the the game has reclaimed his world championship. James, go, just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh. Yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. And here we see the point deduction that it could very well be the difference in this fight. I thought the Gale did enough to win the fight. Now I'm winning 8 to 4, 7 to 5. But again, that deduction in point of a point could very well. Come back to be the difference. No, 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 and here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. who has the scorecards. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. We have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, John McKay, scores about 117 to 110. Judges Don Trella and Robert Hoyle both scored about 114 to 113. All three in favor of the winner. And once again, the IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, James Chucky the Gale. James the Gale. Recaptures the IBM Super Middleweight crown. Scores a 117-110 by John McKay, Don Trello, Robert Hoyer, 114-113. And uh, DeGale goes to his corner and his legions of fans. And he is once again a world champion, is James DeGale. I thought the right man was successful and won the world title. The game was the more active of the two. James DeGale taking home the world title back to England. And I thought it was a justified decision. Unanimous in favor of the man known as Chunky. So that is how our co-main event has unfolded as James DeGale is standing by now with Jim Gray. I can see the emotion that you have and all the pressure that you have had on you. How would you describe this fight and what does this victory mean to you to get your championship back? This is me, two-time world champion. He feels great. But full credit to Caleb Truett. He showed that he can mix it at the very, very top. He's tough, he's game. But I told you, when I'm fit and I'm injury free, it's hard. People are gonna find it hard to beat me. But yeah, I'm just happy that I'm a two-time world champion. I've got my IBF title back. I'm a proud IBF world champion. And I'm back, I'm back. Team Chunky, we're back. That's your belt back right there. Oh, man. Two and a half years I had that for, and I lost it to Shrek last December. He embarrassed me. I come back and got back my title. Were you thinking about what you said before the fight in those later rounds 
that if you didn't get this decision that this could be the end and did that springboard you to continue to fight? 100% that pushed me on. But Caleb Truax has got the feeling of being world champion. Now, so he brought a lot more to the table. But as I say, me on my day, I'm very fit uh, and switched on, I'm hard to beat. All right, let's take a look at what happened in the third round. It was ruled a punch, however, it's clearly a headbutt. And how much did this eye affect you for the rest of the fight as we take a look see. at it? I couldn't see from my right eye. And if you watch the fight, it was obstructing my sight. Headbutt. Oh, look, come on, man. I need to give it, I need to give it, oh, it's crazy. The ref was mad. And I love uh, Chris Burr as well. Man. What's your name? Of? Robert Burr. Robert Burr, I like Robert. But I like him, but t today he was a bit wrong. How much did the eye affect you moving forward for the rest of the fight from the third round on? I couldn't see. I couldn't see, I promise you. Uh, but I'm just glad that I got through it. I showed some heart, heart because in my, in my last fight against Trax, I was unfit. I was like a weak little kid and he was coming forward and I was going, oh, so I'm saying because I weren't fit. My shoulder, I couldn't hook off my front hand. But I'm just glad that I'm back. I've had a good camp and I'm ready to go as soon as I think. I'm left. I've got to wait till these heal up, but I want to be busy. I've got a couple years left in this game, Jim. Final thought, he gave you a rematch. Will you consider giving him if one now? If you don't want to see it, we can do it. It's easy work now, I promise you, next time I swear to God. But full, full respect to him. I've got a lot of respect for him. He ain't a journeyman, he's a tough guy. Congratulations, James. Respect. Caleb. Respect, Caleb. Respect. I did tell you though, but you are. Your thoughts on this decision? Uh, I, th I thought I did enough to win the fight, but I, I also thought I was pretty flat and didn't get my uh, shots off like I wanted to, but... It's, uh, it's not up to me, it's up to the judges, and uh, it's not in my control, so I guess I got to roll with uh, what they say. Why couldn't you get your shots off? I don't know. I don't know. I was just a little bit flat, I think. I felt really good coming in. I, uh, the weight cut went, went great. Um, I don't know. I just couldn't get my shots off like I did the last fight, and, and uh, uh, it showed. You know, I, uh, I didn't get enough punches on target, and, and uh, like I said, I thought I won. I kept him on the back foot the whole time and kept the pressure on him, and he never hurt me, but it is what it is, I guess. The headbutts, you're the recipient of a couple, he's yeah. the recipient. Uh, how much did that affect you in the fight? He clearly affected DeGale in the third round. Yeah, I mean, I, he, he was ducking down and uh, kind of coming up with the uppercut and his head was first and he cut me over both eyes and uh, blasted me in the mouth in like the first or second round. And I mean, it, it didn't affect the fight, it is what it is. Uh, boxing is, a, is a, uh, a rough game, so gotta roll with the punches. Two tough fights, he said he'd give you a rematch. You want it? Yeah, absolutely, man. I, uh, I gave him a rematch straight away, so why not do it again? All right, Caleb, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. And uh, Michelle, Gia, I love you guys. All right. Barry, back to you, Rinko. So Caleb Truax felt he did enough, but he did say that he felt flat tonight. It could have been a longer training camp, maybe he left some of the fight in the gym. But nonetheless, James DeGale, victorious. He gave a lot of credit to Caleb Truax. But he kissed the idea of Super Midway Crown and said, look, I had this for two and a half years, and now it is once again in my possession. Caleb Truax shaking hands with Badu Jack. You won, bro. You won. You won. Ian Markley's the promoter for Truax. You won that fight, bro. shoulder. Truax basically disappointed. As they all enjoy this momentous occasion is Okay, let's go, let's go. Damn. The losses then go pleasing all the eyes. It was the most beautiful fight. But it was one in which James DeGale dug down deep and proved that he was tonight. He was better than Caleb Truax here. I see Truax, and that might be a matchup down the line. As James DeGale goes ahead and shakes hands with David Benavides. I'd love to see that fight. David Benavides, the WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World. And now DeGale once again, the IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World. And we get ready for our main event of the evening. Also, before we get off of this fight, I have to go back, and I did not realize this until James DeGale said it with Jim Graham, but that laceration above the right eye of James DeGale was ruled, it was caused because of a punch. Now, you saw that it was deemed, it was because of a headbutt. But Robert Burke here in Las Vegas, the WBA and the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship of the World is on the line. The American Dream and Islandi Lada taking on the IBF Junior Middleweight Champion of the World. Here's Jim Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. 
for the World Championship Unification Main Event. Please welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, here is the undefeated IBF Junior Middleweight Champion of the World, Swift Jared Hearn. And here is Swift Jared Hearn. And now, please welcome the WBA and IBO Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Eris Landi, the American Dream, Lotta! And here is Eris Landi, Lotta. He defected from Cuba in 2007, Lotta. Guillermo Rigondeaux defected from Cuba during the Pan Am Games in Rio de Janeiro. Some weeks later, they were caught by Brazilian authorities and returned to Cuba. In 2008, Lada attempted a second defection, this time on a speedball to Mexico. Lada was successful and made his way to Hamburg, Germany, where he joined Olympic champions Orlando Solis, Jan Bartholomew, and Yuriokis Gamboa. For Lada's toughest opponent was Paul Williams, a fight that he lost, but the decision was so bad that the state of New Jersey suspended the judges but did not overturn the call. Lada said he knows that Hurd is a tall guy for the weight. He's tough and he likes to come forward, bringing a tremendous amount of pressure. His style is going to bring the best out in me. I love fighting aggressive fighters because it really gives me a lot of openings. I'm ready for whatever he brings to the table. That is Landi, the American dream Lada. Going on his 10th year as a pro, looking to make a definitive statement tonight against Swift Jared Hurd. He is the longest reigning 154 pound world champion. And this is a big moment for both as we take a look at our tail of the tape. You see that Lada is seven years older than Hurd. The height advantage and the reach advantage in favor of the undefeated IPF. Super well to a champ of the world, Swift Jared Hurd. to begin the proceedings. Well, set it up to ring announcer. Here's the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the joint here at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada as Premier Boxing Champions presents our featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Showtime. Sponsored by Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach in Casa Noble Tequila, the noble pursuit. 
This unification bout is sanctioned by the WBA. President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. Supervisor is Robert Mack. The IBF President Daryl Peoples. Supervisor Randy Newman. The IBO President Ed Levine. Supervisor Jorge Alonso. And the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Anthony Marnell III. Executive Director is Bob Bennett. Introducing our three judges. Scoring this bout from ringside. From Reno, Nevada, Bert Clements. From Avon, Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. And from Las Vegas, Nevada, Dave Moretti. We introduce our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Kenny Bayless. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the unified IBF, WBA, and IBO 154-pound championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with orange trim, go, go. fighting out of Akokeek, Prince Akok. George's County in Maryland. He weighed in at a ready 153 pounds, he is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 21 wins, no losses, and 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is looking to unify the titles in his second defense of his belt. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning, the defending, and the undefeated IBF Junior Middleweight Champion of the World, introducing Swift, Jared. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing colors representing the U.S. flag, white with red and blue trim. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Guantanamo, Cuba, he weighed in at 153 and one half pounds. His record, 25 wins, two losses and two draws, with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the longest reigning 154 pound world title holder tonight making his seventh world title appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the WBA and IBO Super Welterweight Champion of the World, introducing Ennis Lundy, the American Dream Lotta. And once again, a referee in charge is Kenny Bayless, now to give instructions. Okay, guys, trunks are good on this side. Trunks are good on this side. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you again to keep this fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say, you must obey. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. It is our main event of the evening. The WBA and the IBF junior middleweight crowns are on the line. Both fights, both championships haven't been unified. Both the IBF and the WBA junior middleweight crowns have not been unified since in 18 years since when Felix Trinidad did it against Fernando Vargas. Oh, Jared Hearn and Landy Lada are going to do that here tonight in our main event. Lada, the southpaw. Jared Hearn, the conventional fighter, will see if the pressure of Jared Hearn is going to be that much of a big difference and possible height advantage. And a slip down by Jared Hurd. Immediately a slip by Kenny Bayless. Cuban faithful showing their appreciation. 
out, Jared fellas. Knows he's in there against a technician. Just a former amateur fights right as Randy Latter. Almost a 10 year career as a pro. Both of Lana's losses have been disputed. He won against Paul Williams in 2011, a fight that the New Jersey judges that scored a fight. Back, 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 The decision was not overturned. And dating back to July of 2014, when Lana got to and lost by splitting the city. Up a little bit. I need you to sit down and get punched. Boom, boom, but don't load up. All right, don't let him out. Okay. Look, when you rolling, come down. Go in with the jab. You understand me? High behind the jab. Okay, you landing a good right hand and you hurt it. Okay, All right, you do it. The corner of Jared Hurd wants him to work behind the jab. Lotta looks very good as Lotta walked into tonight's championship right. matchup. Eight and a half pounds. champion, a big straight left that connected. He is sitting in the front row next to Alice Spence, watching the action. Now heard being aggressive. Marcus will be the first. He's got to be able to use his size and his reach advantage to his favor.
27-year-old out of Aqua Kick, Maryland. followed by, it was an uppercut that was partially blocked by Jared Hearn. But look at this wonderful counter as Lada threw a straight left, but Hearn answered right back, boom, grazing right on the nose in the chin of Edeslandi Lada. So that punch did connect for Lada, but Jared Hearn landed a big counter right hand. And if you're Edeslandi Lada, he needs to utilize his legs. 
He's got to get on his bicycle, use his jab, and keep Jared Hurd at bay. Jared Hurd is so big and strong and presents such a difficult challenge when it comes to the height and the reach advantage that he possesses. And chances swift from the fans from Aqua Kick Maryland that have come to support their hometown book. And Lada realizes he's going to have to fight. A double right hook, and Lada has like a picky boost styles to say, you didn't do anything to me. And Nestor Rodriguez, the trainer of Jared Herbert, has been informing him, we want you to cut off the ring. And so far in rounds two and three, Herbert has done that. Now he has Lada pinned against the ropes. And Lada is remaining a stationary target, which is very unlike him. He has not done that in recent memory. A left hook to the body, but a big straight left hand that found its mark for Lada. We haven't seen that in terms of the blistering speed since the first round with Lada. Heard looking to connect, he's throwing enough to keep himself busy. Maybe he's trying to set up something big. That would be my only thought process. And Lada, as he tries to throw a straight left, is stymied as Hurd puts his big six foot one frame upon Lada. Hurd is dipping underneath and then sliding to his right using feints to throw off the timing of that is Lada. Lada. A big straight left hand that connected by Jared Hurd. But Lada rips into the body. Continues to apply pressure, and that is the end of the fourth. Got him against the rope, hold with the left hand, and bring that right uppercut. You're going there. You're going there with good hands up, right? Make them move and shoot it here. Shoot it to the body and shoot it to the head. Split. Roll, roll. I need a roll, roll, all right? Add that too. Hey, look. You got to see some of the work from round four with Jared Hurd. Really looking at him is work as Jared Hurd with the jab, and he shoots that straight right hand down the middle. Back and that is not the end. Okay. Constant pressure, and it's not reckless pressure with Jared Hurd. It is smart, calculated pressure. Look on behind the jam, and then he's so economical with his punches. Very rarely does Jared Hurd waste any motion. Lada doesn't either, but Lada has to get more aggressive. The right hook that 
Jones. Some of the work from Jared Hurd in the fifth. The big right hand by Hurd. Boom. You saw that. Certainly catch the attention of Edeslandi Laram. He stepped inside. Boom. A grazing shot, but still caught him off guard. Round six. I gave the first and the fifth to Laram. I gave two, three, and four to Hurd. So this fight, three to two. seems to have more spring in his legs as he did in the fifth. Oh, 
sixth round between Jared Hurd and Hans Landy. I need some more water. Ain't nothing in here. Here, right here. Come on, man. We gotta be all the fucking that. Hey, listen to me. You just keep boxing like that, okay? Everything is good. All this guy is banking on you getting tired, and that ain't gonna happen. You just gotta keep using that jazz. It was an uppercut that stopped Jared Hurd in his tracks. But back came Jared Hurd. As we see, it is Landy Lada setting up the jab and then boom. Talk about landing with accuracy, but Jared Hurd would not be denied as he would throw and connect with his own combination. Couple of right hands for Jared Hurd. Seven in the second half of the fight. This could be a close one. I could see a four to two in favor of Hurd. I could see a three to three. Either or. And the corner of Nestor Rodriguez of Jared Hurd, his trainer, informing him he wants him to take away the jab of Lada. They want Hurd to bring that right hand up, a big straight right hand. And pushed away a lot of Right hand, right hand. 
सुपर चेस्ट सुपर है Sure. 
took, followed by an uppercut that missed as Lada got out of range. in this round, okay? Yeah. I want you to, job. look, you gotta use the jab now, okay? Yeah. You gotta let your jab work, okay? Yeah. Just keep boxing for me. Give me a drink. How we feel? We feeling okay? Huh? Look at me. And let's take a look at some of this inside work by Jared Hurd. As we saw that, some uppercuts, just looking to get through the guard a lot of Bird Hurd was just throwing left hooks and uppercuts to Lada. There you saw one that got through. Okay, watch your head. Sam watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your head. And immediately, and as Andy Lada starts off the tent with a straight left that connected down the middle. Bird looking to use some fence to close the distance. Guys are testing each other, but Hurd is unloading a combination. And Lada's talking to Kenny Bayless as to the keys, thinking that Hurd is leaning with his head. You can tell that the face of that is Lonnie Lada, that right side of his face is swollen a little bit from the shots of Jared Hurd. Swarmies crowding at his Landy Lotto. He's using every bit of his height and his reach and all his weight and his size to try to push himself upon at his Landy Lotto. Left hook to the good cage of Lotto by Hurd. A straight left that backed up Jared Hurd for a moment. And now Hurd's got to do some work on the inside. Throwing the punches, a straight right hand, but Lada connected with the combination that momentarily impaired the jaw of Hurd.
Oh, oh, they next! They don't want me. Very good, very good. Everything looks good. We're winning. Listen. Beautiful job. Listen. Don't stand in one spot now. Find him and step over, okay? Look, he's running right into the jail all the time. And that left hand is there all the time. And here is Jared Hearn with an uppercut. As we see Jared Hearn who was fighting close distance but a lot of answering back. Round 11, the championship rounds. Here in Las Vegas.
Watch the hedge. Touch gloves. Touch up. Good luck, guys. A very close fight between Boom! Right there, right on the button. And Hurd 
walking away as to say I finally got him. And one more look at this at close distance. You see an uppercut and then boom, right over the right hand of Lada. And Lada crashes to the canvas. He beat the count and is the knockdown enough to give Jared Hurd the victory. That was a very close fight. A lot of fought with determination and showed a lot of grit. Jared Hurd, that is what has been emblematic of his career since the beginning. And now here is Jimmy Lennon Jr. who has the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Bert Clements scores them out 114 to 113 in favor of Erislandi Lara. Judge at ringside, Glenn Feldman sees it 114 to 113 in favor of Jarrett Hurd. And judge at ringside, Dave Moretti sees it 114 to 113 in favor of the winner. He is now the WBA, the IBF, and the IBO 154-pound champion of the world, Swift Jarrett Hurd! The new WBA junior middleweight champion of the world, Jarrett Hurd. Let's go, baby! Number one! Absolutely smiling, and the knockdown was the deciding factor. One point. Hurd, if he didn't get that knockdown, he would not have won the fight. He's overcome with emotion. He's with his trainer Ernesto Rodriguez. And he's standing by with Jim Gray, his swift Jared Hurd. Barry, thanks so much. Jared, congratulations. This was just one tremendous fight and a tremendous effort by both fighters. How would you describe this battle? Listen, Jim, I want to give all the glory to Glock, because without him, this would have been possible. But to the finals win, it was a tough one. But I went out there and did exactly what I would say I was going to do. I mean, this what face all 12 rounds and I got the victory. Did you feel as though you needed that knockdown in the final round to win this fight? Because that proves to be the difference. It's one point on all three cards. No, I didn't feel like that. I feel like I was in control of the whole fight. I was putting the pressure on him, and I was more busy. I should have been up way higher in the skill cards. But at the end of the day, I still got the victory, and God was good. Let's take a look at this knockdown. If you turn to your left right there, Jarrett, and tell us what happened here in the waning moments of the 12th round. So right here, we in close. And I feel his hands low. And I pulled that same hook because he was vulnerable before we saw an Angulo fight. And I pulled it right there. Did, did you feel as though your youth and the age factor difference, the seven years, was a difference in this fight? Were you able to tire Laura out? Oh, I don't think it had nothing to do with age, man. You know, I feel like Laurel came good. Uh, he was still in shape and no matter what age he was. I think it was me. And the game plan we had to keep the pressure on us was, was a side effect. How would you describe this moment internally? What's going on with you? Man, the worst can't describe it, man. I, it was years ago. I never pitched it this day. And now I'm here. Hallelujah. God is good, man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your family, obviously, they're here with you and what it means to have them, and, and, and so close to not even having an opportunity to have this moment. And now, as you take a look at your mom and your brothers and sister, what do you think it means for all of them as well? Man, it's, it's, it's what the opportunity they gave me. They gave me a chance to become the champion of the world, and I did it two times. I know it's early. Have you thought about next? Mr. Charlo is ringside. Laura, again, what do you think you'd like to do? Man, it doesn't matter, you know, you, honestly, you see that Swift is just ducking anyone. It doesn't matter, man, you know, I'm number one now. I'm in control, so I'm going to call the shots. I'm going to go look over with my team. We're going to see what we're going to do. Jared, congratulations. Spectacular performance. Thank you. Here is Landy, if we can talk to you. Felix De Jesus will translate. This was a tremendous, tremendous fight. A lot of courage by both fighters. What are your thoughts on the decision? 
¿Qué piensas de la decisión? Una tremenda pelea. A pesar de, de la caída en los últimos segundos ya de la pelea, estaba ganando. Creo que esa caída que tuve fue la, la decisión de los jueces. Besides uh, that I fell in the last round, I felt I was winning this fight easily. And um, you believe you fell? You don't believe you were knocked down? Fuiste que te que te tumbaron o que fue que te rebalaste? No, me dio, me dio, me dio golpe. No, no, me dijeron, me dijeron, me dijeron. Eso no, eso eso no era para que hiciera la pelea así. But that's not to decide the fight because I was winning the fight. You don't believe that that should have been the difference? Tú no crees que eso tenía que ser la diferencia ese. No, claro que no, claro que no. Un golpe, un golpe, una pelea no era, no era todo la para la caída. Yeah, one punch in a fight doesn't determine the fight. Would you like a rematch? Quiere una revancha. 100%, 100%. 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 